Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to the tutorial on rendering the little gingerbread man. So we have modeled him, we've created the environment, we've textured him, he's rigged, he's animated, everything's ready to go. We just need to start working on rendering. However, it's not as simple as that. We also have to tweak our lighting depending on each camera shot. If you are new to this channel, I post video tutorials on a weekly basis. Software includes Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and so much more. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out that creativity, open up your software, and let's go ahead and start rendering our animation of our little gingerbread man. So here we are, and this is our set. And so far, this is shot one, and it goes from zero to 90. So I always recommend render a shot or two to make sure the lighting is good. So I already did this, at least for frame 90, and this is what it currently looks like. And I like the way it looks, so I would consider this done. Now there is noise in the renders and things like that, but at least the lighting and everything is finalized and I can move forward. Now the issue is, is that if any of these other shots need lighting changes, it will actually affect this shot. So what I'm gonna do is actually file save scene as, and I'm just gonna name it the scene. If I do make any changes, it will only impact this particular shot. Let's go ahead and look at shot number two. This is what it looks like. It's from zero. So once again, let me go to zero and do a quick little render. Now I'm probably going to pause the recording so you don't have to watch it render because it can take a little bit. And I don't think you need to watch it render. I will be right back. Okay, here is shot number two. And I didn't fully finish rendering, but my main focus is here. And I like the way it looks. I feel like my eye is definitely focused here and everything's looking good. So I'm going to leave it at that. Let's go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna file save as again and make sure that this one is labeled differently. All right, let's take a look at shot number three. This is from 91. So I am gonna make some changes here, 91 to 182. We wanna make sure that he looks good here. Let me bring on my render window. And the nice thing is that if you wanna do a test resolution, you can go to the render window, go to view test resolution. I can do like 50% and that will actually run it faster. You can hit one, one to really see the effect. So when I'm ready to render, I need to make sure that's a hundred percent. But as you can see, there he is, he's looking really good. And this is an opportunity to figure out if I really wanna do a depth of field. I'm gonna ahead and press stop. And as I mentioned before, to get depth of field, you can go up to display, heads up display. And I'm gonna go to object detail and my distance is 27. So this is, has to go through the camera. So select your camera. And I'm gonna go to my shape node, scroll down, go to Arnold, turn this on. And oh, I already forgot it, 27. <laughs> So let's go ahead and put, let's see, distance is 28. And I'm, I'm gonna just increase my aperture to about 0.2 and let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and press stop. I do like it, but to make him look a little smaller, I wanna increase my aperture size. So let's go ahead and change it to 0.3. So the blurrier the background and the more focus the little gingerbread man is, the smaller he's gonna look. Now there is going to be a lot of noise, but all of that has to be fixed in my render settings. All right, I kind of like the look of that. I can zoom in a little bit to make sure everything's kind of clear. If you want to double check to make sure, just go ahead and hit 100% so we can make sure that this is in fact looking really nice. All right, that looks pretty good. I like the way it looks. All right, so let's go ahead and copy this. File, save as, shot number three. And let's go ahead and take a look at this one. All right, this one is from 192 to 240. Okay, so this one is taken off. And I'm gonna bring this up and do a test resolution. So let's go ahead and view test resolution 50%. And this is where the major issue comes in because I'm not a big fan of the way this is looking. I like the shadow, but everything else looks really blown out and it's taken away from this scene. So I'm going to file save as and then make some adjustments. So file save scene as. 
Okay, so one of the things that I'm worried about is this table, and I'm probably going to see if I can increase the roughness, but I'm also going to reduce the specularity so that hopefully that reduces the shininess of it. So I'm going to take a snapshot and see if that made a difference. And it actually made a significant difference, so that's good. And I'm going to do something similar to the plate. I'm going to uh, reduce the color of the specularity and increase the roughness a bit more. So the focus, again, is on the little gingerbread man and not on the environment. Now he is actually relatively dark as well. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of lighting on him specifically. So I'm gonna go to Arnold Lights and I like to use area lights and I'm going to snap it on him. Make sure it's facing on this direction and kind of push this over here. I'm gonna turn off normalize and I'm also going to hide the light because I wanna see what type of effect this is having on my character. So you can see that it's lighting this side, which is one, but you can also see that it's affecting the plate and it's also affecting my regularity, which I don't want, I just wanted to have light. So what I'm gonna do is select my light and if you keep scrolling down, there is a specularity option which you can actually just turn off. So that means that when I render, it's no longer shiny, it's just emitting light. The other thing is I'm gonna kind of increase my intensity just a little bit more to make sure that the light is in fact impacting it. There it is. The geometry is being impacted by the light. So, but the, lucky for us, Maya gives us complete control. So we're gonna go to Windows Relationship Editor, Light Linking Light Centric. So this is a relationship between the objects and the light. So Windows Relationship Editor, Light Linking Light Centric. And you're gonna see kind of like an outliner on the left and an outliner on the right. The left is lights and the geometry is on the right. So if I select my area light and I tell it, I don't, I don't want it to impact the environment, I just deselect it. So anything selected means that it's being impacted and anything deselected means that it's not. So now that I did that and I render, you're gonna see that it only impacts the gingerbread man. All right, so let's go ahead and bring back close this, the dome and see the effect of this piece. So I like that it's got this highlight. I like that it's a little bit boosted. The light is boosted. So this is what we had before and this is what we have now. Now he still looks a little bit in the dark side, but let's take a look at what's called luminosity. So if you click on this button, you got alpha, but this one goes through RGB, then it goes through alpha, and then it goes to luminosity. And luminosity just shows you how bright everything is in grayscale. So you can see that everything's, the gingerbread man who's supposed to be the focus should be the main brightness. And you can see that it is being impacted here. But overall, plate and table is still looks really bright. So I'm gonna select my light again and maybe give it a little bit of, a little boost but I'm also going to darken the environment. So this is a nice thing about my eyes that it gives you complete control. So especially Arnold shaders. So you can see that the base color, I can actually go in and reduce the weight a little bit. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the table, just a tiny bit. Let me turn that off. Let me take a snapshot and then let me render it. So it's a subtle change, but you can see that the plate is just a little bit darker. The Gingerbread man is just a little bit brighter because of the light source. And I think I wanna push it a little bit more. Um, I don't like how bright that light is now. I think it's too bright. I feel like there is a light source and I'm just trying to use it to bounce. And I could add a little bit of color on it, like, uh, like kind of like the bounce light that it's there, like a little bit of blue. And for this, I am gonna darken it a little bit more just to see the effect. So let's go ahead and darken that. And the table was already looking pretty good. So let's see what that looks like as well. Now, another key component that we want is to make sure that if uh, it makes sense with the other scene. So you can see that this one is pretty dark. As long as it matches, it looks good. You don't want it to go black or too dark as then it's gonna look, in look inconsistent. All right, so again, let's take a look at the luminosity. All right, it's starting to look really good. So this is what we had before, and this is what we well, before, after, before, after. So you can see that's making a really nice impact. Now, of course, I wanna add a little bit of depth of field, but remember this is going to be animated. So if I add depth of field to the edge of the table, uh, he will disappear. But let's see what this one looks like before I move forward, All right? So we start to lose him because my light is not that big. So let me actually 
put it a little bit higher, a little bit bigger, and just kind of make sure that it fills the scene a little bit more. Uh, again, I like to hide the light to see how it's impacting the character. And you can see it's barely impacting it. Let me make it higher, bigger, and I might have to make it brighter. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's bring in the dome. Looks good. I feel like the specularity in this one is really, I feel like I'm losing the specularity. There we go. I feel like I'm losing the saturation. I mean, let me reduce the weight as well. Guys, it's almost starting to lose the color of it, right? So now it's a little bit more accurate to the red. That's kind of what I want. I want to make sure it matches. Uh, let me go back to the beginning, make sure that one still looks good. It's looking pretty good there too. And what we can do is actually animate the depth of field. So this distance is at 34. So if I select this, go under Arnold, let's uh, turn it on. And our focus is going to be at 34. And let's increase our aperture to about 0.2. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so you can see that the background's getting blurrier and things like that. Let's see what happens if we go to 0.3. Little blurrier still, as long as this little guy's on focus, we should be okay. It's a little blur over here, which I'm probably gonna have to move the object, but see what that is. Whatever this is, is gonna have to move out of the way. Uh, let's go to panels, perspective, perspective. And we'll just kind of scoot this out of the way. We'll scoot both of them out of the way. Again, this is all changes that the other ones are not gonna be affected by, so it's gonna be okay. Let's double check to make sure that worked out okay. Yep, this definitely looks good. Now we're gonna go to, I think, to around here. It's 228, the distance is 50, basically 60. So let's go back to the camera, open up those attributes. Actually, we're gonna go back. Let me select the focus distance and set a key on one and two. And then around here, we said it was around 60. So select the camera, change this to 60, and then set a keyframe. And let's see what that looks like. All right, so he's looking nice and clear. And then we just have to go basically in the middle here to make sure like in this scene, he should be at 48, so again, let's select the camera and we're gonna keep scrolling down until we see Arnold. We're gonna type in, it's actually really close. So I'm just gonna type in 48 just to make sure the focus distance remains the same. Here it is, so it's looking pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna go open up the first shot, make sure we're looking through the camera and I'm gonna crop it to 90 just to make sure. And we're gonna go to the render settings. So let's go to the render settings up here at the top right. So I personally like to just call it scene one, sh shot one, and then put a, a backslash and then put in another one, scene one, shot one. So what's gonna happen is that it's going to create a folder, name this, and then the renders are all gonna be called that. And I'm also gonna change this into a PNG. So if you look up here, it should tell you what it's gonna look like. Uh, let's go to name number extension. I'm gonna change this to the value of three, and this is gonna be from one to 90. So again, this is the nice thing about labeling the cameras is that it's really fast to figure out what your frame rates are. Then I guess we got one through 90. We're gonna keep scrolling down. Let's pick the right camera. And then I'm gonna crank it up to HD 720. And if this was a real film, I'd probably crank it up to 1080, but I think that should be good enough. Let's go to Arnold. Let's crank this up to four. This is all gonna be three, three. I have transmissions, I have subsurface. I don't have fog, so I can actually probably drop that. And then turn on the adaptive sampling and I'm gonna change this to eight. So that's basically gonna get the render ready and I'm going to save it before I render cube. So basically this scene is ready to go. Um, and once I'm ready to go, then I will go to rendering, render, render sequence options, and you just wanna make sure that it's gonna to go to 
that is choosing the right camera, which it is. And I don't have any render layers and things like that, but everything's working out perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and open the next one, which is shot two. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna grab scene one, shot two. Under settings, backslash, uh, let's see, it's gonna be a PNG, name, number, extension, three. And if I've done this earlier, I wouldn't have to repeat myself, but here we are. Uh, one through 90. Uh, this is going to be the second camera, shot two. And don't forget to change this to HD 720. Again, same story, four, three, 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 three. And I don't have any volume, so that should be okay. Adaptive sampling eight. And then, because we're basically ready. All right, let's open up the next one. Sorry, this is gonna be rinse and repeat. This is from 91 through 182, so that's already set, awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and paste this time, I'm changing it to three, shot three. P and G, after you've done this a million times, you kind of get used to all of this. It's really funny. Um, let's see, 91 through 182. Again, choose the right camera. Choose the right HD 720. And let's go ahead and crank this up to three, 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 three. Adapt this sampling to eight. Ooh, let's go ahead and save. And finally, the last one. Let's go ahead and open up that scene. It'd be 192 to 240, great. Let's go over here. here. This is number four. Four. PNG, name, number, extension. Uh, let's see, this is 192 to 240. So easy. Make it easy for yourself, guys. Do a little bit of work at the front so it's really easy at the end. Um, and same story, four, three, 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 and then eight. And we're basically ready. If you have multiple computers, you can actually run every scene on a separate computer and let it render. Or you, like me, who only have one computer, you're just gonna go ahead and let it render um, throughout the day and maybe overnight. So if you had a render farm, that would be even better. But I don't have access to a render farm, so it's just gonna be my little computer chugging away. So hopefully you guys, in the next video tutorial, what we are going to do is see the final results and then composite it together in After Effects, add a couple little details, make sure everything looks good, and then actually create a final animation. So I'm very excited because we're actually, we're almost there, really close. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you got a tip or two from this video. If you did, it would be amazing. If you like to subscribe or if you even like the content, please like and subscribe as well. That is your message to me, letting me know that you like this content and that you want to see more. Don't forget to also take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find free videos, eBooks, 3D models, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com and you will also find some e-courses. There is, uh, you can purchase some e-courses. Those are deep dive into Maya, including modeling, texturing, UV mapping, rendering, and so much more, and lighting. So if you wanna support me further, you can also purchase an e-course that would be amazing. So again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Keep creating and I will see you next time when we actually finish this animation. I'm so excited.